Welcome to this NCEA session, using sentence expansion to improve students' writing and grammar in diverse learning environments. I am Beverly Ann Chin, Professor of English at the University of Montana in Missoula, Montana. I am the Director of the English Teaching Program and the Montana Writing Project. I have over 40 years of teaching experience. I have been President of the National Council of Teachers of English, I am a former board member for the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards. I am also the senior project consultant for the 2011 and 2017 writing frameworks of the National Assessment of Educational Progress. You may know this as the nation's report card. I am also very pleased to be the author of Grammar for Writing, grades six through 12, and Grammar Workshop, grades three through five, published by William H. Sadler. William H. Sadler is a proud partner of NCEA, and I am very pleased to be with you today. Let's look at the goals of this session. I would like you to understand the strategy of sentence expansion as an effective method of integrating grammar into writing instruction. I would like you to discover how sentence expansion improves ideas and sentence fluency in students' writing. I'd also like you to learn how sentence expansion can be taught as a scaffolded workshop, meaning I do, we do, you do, and to use this in diverse learning environments. Finally, I'd like you to know how you can create sentence expansion activities for your students in different writing content areas and different writing purposes. So welcome again to this session. Let's think about why some of our students might write short, dull sentences. Sometimes our students may be more concerned for grammatical correctness than with their content or their message. Some of our students may not know how to make their sentences more interesting. And sometimes students may not remember the purpose and audience for their writing. I'm sure that some of you have students who have these concerns and therefore they do write short dull sentences. This workshop on sentence expansion will help you address many of these items. What does research say about the teaching of grammar? There's a long history of research from George Hillux in 1986 through Ray Noguchi in 1991, Constance Weaver in 1998, and the National Council of Teachers of English in 1996. The research over this long period of time states that teaching grammar in the context of students' writing is, highly, is a highly effective way to improve students' writing, especially sentence fluency. So it's important that we remember that grammar is an, is an essential part of effective communication, but an effective way of teaching grammar is in the context of students' own writing. This sentence expansion workshop will demonstrate that. Sentence expansion is a research-based strategy that integrates writing and grammar in a seamless, dynamic, reciprocal manner. In sentence expansion, students learn and apply grammar in the context of new sentences. Students learn how to add information and details to their sentences. For those of you who teach writing, you may know this as the trait of ideas or development of ideas. And students discover how to create flow and rhythm in their writing of sentences. This is known as sentence fluency. Sentence fluency involves sentence variety, the variety of sentence beginnings and middles and endings. Through sentence expansion, we can teach both revising for ideas and sentences and editing for correct grammar and punctuation. When students add information to short sentences to make their writing more detailed and interesting, we are helping the students revise their writing. Often we will tell students, tell me more, describe in more detail what you see in your head. This would be revising for ideas. 
when we're helping students incorporate their knowledge of parts of speech and using commas in particular to punctuate their new sentences, we are helping their students revise their writing for correctness. And in the sentence expansion workshop, we're going to be helping students learn how to add information and details in a particular structured way. First, we're going to help students add information and details at the end of sentences, and then at the beginning of sentences, in the middle of sentences, and finally putting it all together into all parts of sentences. You may be asking yourselves why this particular sequence in sentence expansion. Students have an easier time adding information at the end of a sentence because the basic sentence is already provided and, and in, intact. Then keeping that sentence intact, they can practice adding information at the beginning of sentences. Finally, at the middle of the sentences where they're putting information into the middle and separating off in the subject from the verb of the sentence or the subject and the predicate of the sentence. And then finally putting it together in all parts of the sentence, which is the most sophisticated form of sentence expansion. This is also important for us as we think about our English language learners. And as we go through this workshop, you will see how English language learners will have more success if we follow the sequence of adding information at the end of a sentence, then at the beginning of the sentence, in the middle of the sentence, and finally throughout all the sentences. The scaffolded workshop is a workshop that follows the I do, we do, you do model. Many of you probably use this workshop strategy in both your reading and writing instruction. With the I do section of a scaffolded workshop, the teacher models sentence expansion and the students are listening, they're observing, and they're noticing what the teacher is doing in this particular strategy. Then the students practice this strategy with guidance and feedback from teachers and peers. And students get a chance to practice with it and see how it's working for them and what makes sense and, and perhaps where they need to continue to practice. In the you do part of the scaffolded workshop, the students work individually and apply sentence expansion uh, to their own writing. And again, they get feedback from peers and the teacher. The scaffolded workshop of I do, we do, you do can be used whether you're in person with your students or if you are working in a virtual environment. If you're working in a virtual environment, um, you will still be modeling the I do on screen in front of your students, but the we do might be done in small groups with students, uh, in learning centers with students, uh, if you're allowed to have breakout rooms in breakout rooms, and then the you do is where students are working individually on their own pieces of writing and showing each other and you, the teacher, how they are using sentence expansion on their own pieces of writing. Scaffolded workshop, I do, we do, you do. So let's look at how scaffolded workshops with sentence expansion can be applied to descriptive and narrative writing. Let's assume that you have asked the students to describe or to, to describe a scene or an event. And again, this could be in either a descriptive or a narrative writing assignment. The audience for this piece of writing might be classmates who are not at the scene or the event. I think it's important that we remember students sometimes don't see their audience. So if we always remind them, to whom are you writing? For whom are you writing? Students may have more, um, more voice, more powerful words and, and ideas to communicate because truly writing is communication and we want students to see the audience for their piece of writing. So the writing purpose is to describe a scene or event and the audience is classmates who are not at the scene or the event. So the writer has to describe it so that the classmates can actually see it and experience it. I love to use pictures and photographs because it gets the mind working for people of all ages, but especially our younger students. So here are three pictures, uh, dogs, squirrels. They're in a natural environment. A lot of people enjoy these types of photographs. And again, I encourage you to think about photographs that will uh, invite your students to write descriptive or narrative um, pieces of writing. Here is an example of sentence expansion at the end of the sentence based on the photographs I just showed you. 
The short sentence is, the dog chased the squirrel. And we are going to be using this short sentence throughout this particular uh, sentence expansion exercise. As we move through it, you'll see why we keep the same short sentence all the way through based on these three pictures. The dog chased the squirrel. Now let's see how we can add information at the end of the sentence. The dog chased the squirrel with the bushy tail. Ah, description, painting a little bit more detail. The dog chased the squirrel, which scampered across the yard. Ah, look at the strong verb. Some action is going on. The dog chased the squirrel, which scampered across the yard and up the tree. Even more information, more action, more detail. And students love it when you add another layer. The dog chased the squirrel, which scampered across the yard, up the tree, and onto the roof of a nearby house. Now, these are all built off of the same short sentence, the dog chased the squirrel. But notice each time there is new information, more detail, the writer is painting a clearer picture, there's more action, and um, in the third sentence, you begin to get a rhythm. So sentence fluency plays a part in this. I am not suggesting that longer is better because there's only so much information one can or should add to the end of the sentence. We always want to, again, keep the audience in mind. But in each of these cases, adding information at the end of the sentence helps students revise for both ideas and for sentence fluency, for the flow, for the rhythm of a sentence. And I always encourage us to read sentences aloud so that we can actually hear the information and begin to see the picture. So this is an example of sentence expansion at the end of the sentence. Let's look at what this sentence expansion can be when we add information at the beginning of the sentence. We are still going to keep this sentence, the dog chased the squirrel. We are going to show one word, immediately the dog chased the squirrel. Now you could stop here and have other students begin to add other single words at the beginning of the sentence and see what they come up with. So this one, immediately the dog chased the squirrel. You have that timeliness with that adverb. With a bark, the dog chased the squirrel. Oh, prepositional phrase, add auditory detail. Running at full speed, the dog chased the squirrel. You can also talk about uh, the placement of modifiers. Is it running at full speed, the dog chased the squirrel? And what would be the difference if one had said, running at full speed, the squirrel chased the dog? And that would be a whole different story going on here. That talks about, again, you can talk about the, the location, the placement of the participial phrase describing the subject of the sentence. While the children played in the backyard, the dog chased the squirrel. So there you have a clause. Now, I introduce the labels of the parts of speech only when it's appropriate for the students and their ability levels and their interest levels. What I want to do is to have students focus on interesting, clear, correct sentences. And you can label the parts of speech and teach the punctuation as students gain that confidence and competence in sentence expansion. We've now combined sentence, we've now added information to the end of sentences, at the beginning of sentences. Now let's look at what it looks like when we expand sentences in the middle. And this is more intellectually challenging. The dog chased the squirrel. Here it is in the middle of the sentence. The dog with the large paws and floppy ears chased the squirrel. So you can see the dog chased the squirrel is still the complete sentence, but we've added information now in the middle. This is a more intellectually challenging um, way to expand sentences. It also is something we do naturally in oral language, but our English language learners may have a little bit harder time doing this level of sentence expansion. The dog barked loudly and then suddenly chased the squirrel. Uh, again, more action, auditory cues. The dog that had escaped its leash chased the squirrel. Hmm, interesting, interesting. So again, you can talk about different ways you can add information into the middle of the sentence and be more descriptive and have sentence fluency, have the flow of a sentence by reading it aloud. 
let's put it all together and see the great ideas and the flowing rhythm of sentences when all of this is combined. And again, this is going to be dependent on your students' abilities and interests as they are writing their own descriptive or narrative pieces. Still the same short sentence, the dog chased the squirrel. Barking playfully, the excited dog chased the chattering squirrel for several minutes. Notice all of the new detail and the flow of the sentence. Again, you can teach the part of speech, you can teach punctuation with this particular sentence structure. Here's another example. Tugging at its leash, the dog tried to chase the squirrel, which was looking for acorns around the base of the tree. When the teacher models the I do, and then asks students to do the we do, and ultimately practice the you do, we are scaffolding the instruction and showing, not telling students, how to add information and to add flow to their written language. This might be a good place for you to pause this session and to think about how you can use sentence expansion to help your students write descriptive or narrative pieces and how you can help them integrate grammar into their new sentences. In the first part of this workshop, I've been modeling the scaffolded workshop of I do, we do, you do for students who might be writing descriptive or narrative um, essays or stories and showing you the importance of starting with sentence expansion where you add information at the end of the sentence, then at the beginning of the sentence, at the middle of the sentence, and then combining all of it. We can also use sentence expansion for other content areas and in other writing purposes. So I'd like to share with you an example of sentence expansion with persuasive writing and science. You can use this example in any subject area, history, current events, health. You can also do this with persuasive writing, expository writing, and again, as I showed you earlier, in narrative and descriptive writing. Imagine that your students are writing to persuade. Remember the purpose for persuasion is to change somebody's opinion so they agree with you or take a stance with you and or to do action. The audience for this piece of writing is people who are undecided about whether grizzly bears should remain on the endangered species list. I live in Missoula, Montana and in my part of the United States, people are debating the stat status of grizzly bears, whether they should or shouldn't be on the endangered species list and whether they should or shouldn't be hunted. My students are always engaged in, these, um, in this conversation. There are always news articles and television reports about the grizzly bears. So this is a very timely topic for my students and persuasive writing and science is a very important form of writing for them. Again, I start with photographs, pictures, because it gets the students visually attuned to their topic. It gives them ideas for information they can add. And I always remind them, what is your purpose? Who is your audience for writing? Think about pictures and photographs that you might use if you were doing persuasive writing in your discipline. Here are some examples of sentence expansion at the end of a sentence. Our short sentence this time will be, grizzly bears are an endangered species. Let's look at how we can add information at the end of the sentence. Again, modeling the I do, then we do, and then the students doing the you do on their own. Grizzly bears are an endangered species in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Again, we've kept the sentence Grizzly bears are endangered species intact and added the new information in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Grizzly bears are an endangered species and should always be protected from hunting. Grizzly bears are an endangered species, but they have already made strong recoveries in their population 
in many places. The students and I talk about the writer of each of these sentences and whether the writer is indicating that he or she is in favor or not in favor of keeping the grizzly bears on the endangered species list. When I'm doing sentence expansion, I always want students to be thinking about the meaningfulness of what information they add and how their words show their point of view on this debate. Now we look at sentence expansion with information added at the beginning of a sentence. Grizzly bears are an endangered species. When we expand at the beginning of the sentence, somebody might write, nevertheless, grizzly bears are an endangered species. We want to ask the students, what might have been said in writing before this current sentence, this new sentence, that would cause the writer to use the transition word, nevertheless, which is a contrast. Nevertheless, grizzly bears are an endangered species. Again, meaningfulness and purposefulness in writing. With an ever shrinking habitat, grizzly bears are an endangered species. Hmm, is the writer in favor or not in favor of keeping the grizzly bears on the endangered species list? Even though they are widely found in Asia, Europe, and North America, grizzly bears are an endangered species. Hmm. And you'll notice that I'm reading these sentences with different intonation. I encourage students to read it aloud their sentences so they can communicate their intention. Is it to support or not support the grizzly bears um, as endangered species? So students really begin to see the relationship between ideas sentence fluency, and their intent of persuasion to an audience who is undecided about their stance. Now we are adding information into the middle of a sentence. Grizzly bears are an endangered species. Let's put information in the middle of the sentence. Grizzly bears strive to avoid humans and are an endangered species. Grizzly bears with their voracious appetites are an endangered species. Grizzly bears that are habituated to human food become problem bears, but still are an endangered species. My students love to debate the meaning behind each of these sentences and whether the writer of the sentence is in favor or not in favor of keeping grizzly bears on the endangered species list. Students become better readers when they are doing sentence expansion and talking about the purpose and the audience for these sentences. And again, it goes back to what are they writing about in their own persuasive science piece. This is the most sophisticated form of sentence expansion where we add information in the beginning, the middle and the end of the sentence. As you read these sentences, consider how much new information and how the sentence fluency can be improved um, with sentence expansion. Short sentence, grizzly bears are an endangered species. Having enormous appetites, grizzly bears occasionally wander onto ranches, but grizzly bears cannot be hunted because they are an endangered species in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Look at all of the information in this new sentence. Look at the sentence flow, and then think about the position that the writer is taking on this persuasive, debatable topic. Here's another example. Boldly attacking livestock on farms and ranchers, grizzly bears are a dangerous threat, but they cannot be hunted because they are an endangered species in many parts of the Rocky Mountain states. Students love to debate which sentence is more in favor of the protection of grizzly bears and which sentence is less in favor of the protection. And it gives them that awareness that, that when they are writing for their audience and their purpose, they need to be very mindful of the word choice, the positioning of information, 
and the flow of the information, their sentence fluency. So students really get engaged with sentence expansion. They're learning content, they're learning revision, they're learning editing, they're integrating parts of speech and their content knowledge into this content-based writing and grammar lesson. This might be another place where you'd like to pause this session and jot down some ideas about how you might use sentence expansion to help your students with their persuasive writing, what photographs you might use, and what short sentences you might offer your students. How would you help students improve their ideas and sentence fluency through modeling sentence expansion in another content area? Throughout this session, I've been modeling sentence expansion as an effective method of integrating grammar into writing instruction. I hope that you've noticed that you can use parts of speech and grammar, especially the punctuation, when it's appropriate for your students at their ability level. Teaching students to be both confident and competent writers is the ultimate goal of sentence expansion. We want grammar integrated smoothly into writing to support writing, to support the ideas, to support the purpose and the audience for a student's piece of writing. Throughout this session, we've been looking at how ideas and sentence fluency is enhanced, are enhanced through sentence expansion. There is no one way of doing sentence expansion. It depends on the writer's purpose, the writer's audience, but ideas and sentence fluency can always be improved through sentence expansion, especially with the I do, we do, you do workshop. I know that many of you are teaching either in person or online virtually. Sometimes you're doing both and I commend you all for being so flexible and creative, talented teachers. Think how can you help your students internalize sentence expansion so it becomes their writing strategy that they begin to use in a more natural, normal way? We do sentence expansion in our oral language all of the time. How do we help our students capture this wonderful creative expression when they are also writing? And I hope that you've thought about how you can use and create sentence expansion activities for different writing purposes and in different content areas. Writing across the curriculum is important for all of our students. We want them to use writing as a form of learning and thinking and communicating. We want students to be confident, competent, capable writers and to empower their voices and their views. I have written several professional development series eBooks published by William H. Sadler. These are all free and they are online at the website below. The role of grammar in improving students' writing summarizes the research and gives particular, suggests particular strategies that you can use to integrate writing and grammar instruction. Best practices for teaching grammar at the elementary grades very practical, very hands-on. The sentence expansion ideas are embedded in almost all of the eBooks that I've written. Effective strategies for engaging middle school students in writing and grammar instruction. Again, very research-based, but highly, highly practical. Teaching meaningful revision, deepening, developing and deepening students writing. Teaching writing in the context of Common Core State Standards. All of these eBooks are very practical, they are research-based. The workshop that I've just shared with you on sentence expansion is embedded in these eBooks along with many other practical strategies that students enjoy and that teachers find very successful with all of their learners. Even if you're not an elementary school teacher, I encourage you to read that eBook. Even if you're not a middle school teacher, do read that eBook because 
the teaching of writing and the writing process and the teaching of thinking and communication skills is an ongoing arc of development for our students. So I encourage you to read these and enjoy them, to share them with each other. Many teachers use these eBooks in their professional development learning communities so they can talk about these different strategies, try them out and then share their successes with each other. I thank you for participating in this session on sentence expansion. I also want to thank William H. Sadler who is the publisher of my eBooks and my textbooks. And I also am so pleased that Sadler is a partner with NCEA. I hope you all have enjoyed this session. I hope you found practical ways to help your students improve their own writing and grammar. And I wish you the very best in this school year and in the years to come. Thank you so much for being a part of this NCEA session. Have a good day. Goodbye.